Hi there, and welcome to Living with Victory, brought to you today by Teague's Grocery and Cafe, serving Maggie Valley since 1965. Teague's is Maggie Valley's only grocery store. They're located at 130 Soco Road near the eastern entrance to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and the Blue Ridge Parkway. You'll find supermarket product assortment in a smaller shopping environment with everything you need, whether you live in the area or are just passing through. Stop in for breakfast or lunch at the Corner Cafe, where they feature a variety of daily specials. Teague's Grocery and Cafe is open Sunday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Friday and Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Call them at 828-926-1147 or stop in at 130 Soco Road in Maggie Valley. Teague's Grocery and Cafe. And by the way, today's program is also available on GodTube, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and at livingwithvictory.podbean.com. It's time for Living with Victory, a program of hope and encouragement brought to you by Living with Victory Ministries and listeners like you. In a moment, we'll join your hosts, Laureen and Tony Giorgio, for today's message of perseverance and hope. So if life has left you kicking up dust, keep listening, keep looking up and grab your umbrella, get ready to sing in the rain. Welcome to Living with Victory, where life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning to have peace, joy, and victory in the midst of your storm because Jesus is your umbrella. Hey, hi, this is Tony Giorgio. Welcome to another session of Living with Victory. Today is going to be a great topic in the right time. And we want to hear your praise reports you have, prayer requests you may have. If you want to make a donation, you go to the website, hit on donate, and through our PayPal account, you're welcome to do that. We are listener driven and we appreciate you and love you. And without further delay, let me go to my wonderful sidekick, my wonderful, wonderful wife, Laureen. And she has the topic of the day and the scriptures. Good morning, Laureen. How are you? I am fantastic. Today I'm going to be speaking about a subject that is very close to my heart. Six years ago, when I had to go for a biopsy for breast cancer, it was on Good Friday. And I have heard the Easter story over and over and over again. And sometimes when you do hear it or read it each year, it doesn't make the impact that it really should because it becomes mundane. But the one thing that was sticking out at me at that time was the cup that Jesus asked to pass from him. That's all that kept going through my mind. The cup, the cup, the cup. As I was laying on the table waiting for the doctor to come in, I was talking to Jesus. We were having a good conversation. Just before he came in, I said, well, Lord, we're both drinking our cups today. Yes. Now, I knew what my cup was going to be, but I wasn't sure really what it meant for him to drink his cup. And I wonder if we really do know what it meant for him to drink the cup that night. In Mark 14, 33 through 41, It says, he took with him Peter, James, and John. He began to be struck with terror and amazement. Now, amazement means horror of great darkness. Wow. And deeply troubled and depressed. I don't know if many people really can grasp what he was going through. The severity of of what he was facing, yes. And he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sad, overwhelmed with grief, so that it almost kills me. Remain here and keep awake and be watching. 
and going a little farther, he fell on the ground and kept praying that if it were possible, the fatal hour might pass from him. And he was saying, Abba, which means Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Not what I will, but what you will. Now, I know a lot of us are going through storms, and you are drinking some pretty bitter cups right now. Oh, yeah. It's not easy. He was going to die as man. He wasn't going to die as God. He came back and found his disciples sleeping. And he's saying, have you not the strength to keep awake and watch with me for one hour? Sometimes you just feel so all alone in your circumstances (laughs) that what's the matter with you people? Don't you see how I'm hurting? Why aren't you helping me? You know, we have to take this and understand he knows what we're going through because he, he was going through it here. Yeah. And he feels your pain and hurt. He knows it. If you're alone in your pain right now, or you think you're alone, he knew that too. He knows that feeling. And the next thing he said to them is something that we all should pay very close attention to. Keep awake and watch and pray constantly that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again and prayed the same words. But when he came back again, he found them sleeping. And he came back a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough of that. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinful men, whose way or nature is to act in opposition to God. I want to go back to that first verse when he was, you know, struck with terror and amazement, horror of great darkness and deeply troubled and depressed. Luke twenty two forty four says, And being in an agony of mind, he prayed all the more earnestly and intently, and his sweat became like great clots of blood dropping down upon the ground. Could you imagine that? And, and it's true. You know, anxiety of that magnitude can do that. Most definitely. I mean, I had him to talk to while I was laying on the table. He was talking to his father, but he knew that cup had to be drunk. And we have to drink our cups. But the good news about us being able to drink our cup is that because he did go to the cross, the battle is already won. We could trust him and and walk this out. But I have to tell you personally how I felt going through my breast cancer because this cup became a very strong comfort to me. In Matthew Henry commentary, it says, He was pure with no sin, but he took our sin and curses totally upon him. He was sin for us. This caused him to be very sorrowful. He fully knew the malignity of the sins he was to suffer for, and having the highest degree of love to God, who was offended by them, and of love of man, who was damaged and endangered by them. We were endangered by those sins. No marvel that his soul was exceedingly sorrowful. He was made a curse for us. The curses of the law were transferred to him as our surety and representative. If he did not decide to drink that cup, we would have drunk that cup. Oh, yeah. And that's out of Matthew Henry, is it? Matthew Henry commentary. Commentary. He now tasted death. He drank up even the dregs of the cup. He tasted all the bitterness of it. Are you loved? I don't think we can ever imagine how much we are loved. As I say, with that cup, it kept coming back to me over and over and over again. Uh, God just was trying to drive the point home to me during that time. I believe that's why he allowed me to go through this cancer, because as I said, we read the story, but we don't really fully appreciate what Jesus went through. It was the night before my surgery, 
as I say, the cup, it just, just kept coming back to me, coming back to me. And I was sitting up in bed. God said to me, I'm going to let you feel a little bit of what my son felt in that garden that night. I was immediately just thrown back against my headboard. I was frozen in terror. I couldn't move if my life depended on it. I mean, I was just frozen in terror. The first time I ever realized what terror really felt like. I couldn't breathe. When that finally led up, I realized the love, the absolute love that my Lord had for me. I had to make this personal because he is a personal God. He loves you in a personal way. He loves me in a personal way. But I was going through a very hard time. I didn't know if I was going to live or die. I didn't know what was coming. You know, when I realized how much... He loved me to drink this cup. That was the first time in all the years. I mean, since I was 10 years old, I've been following the Lord. That was the first time I really understood his love for me. I realized that a God that loved me this much to go to the cross and drink that cup and do what he did for me, I could trust him. And I know you could trust him. I don't care what problem you're having right now. I don't care what it is. You could trust him with that problem if you apply this to your problem. You have to understand when you compare your circumstances against what Jesus did for us on that cross, how can we not trust him or want to know the love that kept him on the cross for us because he didn't have to stay there? That's right. The angels in heaven were ready to come down the minute he said, I can't take it anymore. Yes. But he stayed there for you. He stayed there for me. That cup is very important. Read it and over and over again until you finally understand why he went to that cross for us. I understand how afraid we become and how anxious we become when you have your circumstances that are, are pressing in on you. But if you allow Christ to be in the center of those circumstances... All you have to do is just trust him and just give those circumstances to him. That is what he's there for. That is why he died. And that is why, thank God, he is resurrected and he is alive. He's not still on that cross. Sometimes when we're going through these circumstances, we think we're so all alone. We're not alone. He was with me every step of the way. For every treatment I had to go through, I know he was with me. He gave me such a peace that I couldn't worry if I tried because I finally understood the cup that he drank and I finally understood how much he loved me, that whether I stayed here or I went home, and someday I will go home and that will be a joyous time. Because then I'll finally get to see him face to face and thank him for all that he's done for me. But while I'm here on earth, I still have that privilege because he walks with me every moment of every day. And I know he will walk with you if you will allow him and open your heart to him and let him in. Even the doctor was so taken by the way you handled the entire thing with your faith. Me sitting in a waiting room wondering if you're going to make it or not, that was a terror that tested me and my faith because I'm the type of guy who takes care of things. You know, I'm the guy that goes and takes care of whatever the issues are and the advocating. But this time, my hands were tied. My faith was really being tested. Even the doctor was so filled by the way she went through the whole thing with her Lord by her side, which we don't realize that he's still a living God. He's living. He's not dead. And for me to see her come out after I'm, I'm in that waiting room for hours and, and I'm really having my own turmoil and saying, why is this happening? The elevator doors opening and hearing this little voice behind me saying, hi, Tony. And I turn around and there is my wife 
she's hooked up to all kinds of intravenous. She's on the gurney and they're wheeling her. And she's sticking that little head up out from under the covers, smiling and waved at me. It doesn't take much for God to get the message through. And that that was my, my breaking point right there. If she can go through it, looking and hearing her was like the Lord saying, okay, stupid, didn't I tell you? And you know, I can't say more than what she has said, but her faith has set her free of this cancer like nothing I can ever describe to you. I know life could be hard. And it can be very frightening. But if you just allow God to walk with you and you just grab his righteous right hand because he wants to hold your hand as you're going through this wilderness, he will take you through your circumstances. He may take you over them, may take you through them or around them. It's amazing how what you think is going to kill you Because you're thinking in our small minds, how am I going to fix this problem? But the beauty of it is that Christ, choosing to drink his cup and go to that cross, has made a way for us to just trust him. And what type of love does a person have to have to actually give up their lives for another person? When he was on that cross and the full weight of our sins and our curses were on his shoulder, his father had to look away from him. And at that point, that was his lowest point when he had to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yes. And then he died. But God isn't looking away from us. He woos us. He draws us to him. And sometimes we keep saying, after I take care of this, I'll read the word, I'll pray. No, 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 no. Pray first. Read his word first. Don't let your circumstances take precedent over him. He will take care of them. I don't know how he does it. I can't even tell you. All I know is I'm sitting here after six years, and it wasn't one lump they found, they found two. When they started doing the lumpectomy to remove that lump, they realized in the biopsy there was another tumor growing within that tumor, which was worse than the first one they spotted. And it was an aggressive tumor and cancer, a different type of cancer. And yet they got everything and her margins were clear. I'm a walking miracle. She's a walking I miracle. I am a walking yeah. miracle. And I'll tell you what. God really laid on my heart that I would live and not die, not now anyway, so that I could glorify him. And I want to tell you that if you make the choice to really trust him and that you surrender everything to him and totally trust him, you will not be disappointed and you will not be let down at all. We're just traveling through this life. This is temporary. When God steps in, I believe his report before I believe the doctors. And you never, ever know it's up to him, not the doctor, not the medicine. And the end result is not a bad thing to go home. Like we know, Mr. Graham just went home. Mm -hmm. And he said... When you hear, I have died, don't believe it. I am alive. That's That's a victory. So living, dying, you're living in the eternity that God put us here for, to have everlasting life. That's the goal. So don't feel, oh, this one died, that one died. That's not where it's at for us Christians. Keep your eyes focused on him. I just love that old hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and everything else will grow dim in his glory and grace. And remember this, you are touching people with your life and your crosses to bear. You always are. You don't realize it. You don't know who is watching as you go through your circumstances. 
what you decide to do and how you decide to handle your circumstances will show other people that there is hope exactly in their circumstances if you trust him i'm not trying to just puff her up you know this oh, is no, my wife it wasn't me it was only by the grace of god she showed such faith and strength through this that she just infiltrated the heart of the doctor and people around her that dr hetzel who is her doctor a good christian man asked her to do something that would encourage the other women going through the same thing his patients weren't taking the treatment that would help them properly because of the the attitudes this fear there's yeah it, it, it that word cancer just blows you out of the water that's a small C, and Christ is a big C. Amen. She did her testimony on CDs, and he allowed her to put it in the waiting room. We've given away probably 2,000 CD, free CDs mm-hmm. to the patients coming through those doors. They have been inspirational. Out of that darkness, his light shone because that's what the CD's all about. It's not about Laureen, not no, about Tony. not about me Not about all. any of that. It's about his power, his glory, and... And his love. And just remember the cup, what it cost Jesus to go to that cross for you and me. So when you don't feel you're loved, just go to Mark 14, 33 through 41 and read it. You definitely are loved. That took a lot of love to do. It sure did. Look for him. He's there watching over you. He is the umbrella. He is definitely our representative to God and you cannot reach God without going through him. The good part of it is he comes down to you. He walks with you. He doesn't leave you alone. He will comfort you. He is a protector. He is a provider. He is our savior. He is our example of how we should live our lives for other people. And he forgives. So don't miss him as we walk through this earth which is very hard to walk through and it's cold and it's hard and and it 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 just seems like everything is coming at you but you will not go down if you just look at him and just follow his example read his word allow him to direct your life he will he will direct you he will lead you He will help you discern which way to go. Also remember that Jesus is your umbrella in everything, in the storms in life. That's what we're all about. Not us, him. And also remember, if you want to comment, go to our email address, livingwithvictory at gmail.com. If you want to donate to us and help us, we're listener driven. You're welcome to and, and we bless you for it. Remember, we're here if you need us. Contact us. Praise reports. You're having a problem. Write us. Let us know. Whatever it is, we're here. Okay? And I just want to say, are you loved? Yes, you are loved. Jesus loves you and we love you. Have a great week. God bless you. Help Lorraine and Tony in their ministry by becoming a Living with Victory partner. You can make a donation of any amount through PayPal at livingwithvictory.org or send your check to Living with Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. That's Living with Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. And remember, you can make a donation or purchase gas cards for Living with Victory's Fuel for Life program at Teague's Superette at 130 Soco Road in Maggie Valley. You've been listening to Living with Victory with Lorraine and Tony Giorgio, who for over 30 years have advocated for seriously ill children through Compassion Children's Foundation, today known as Living with Victory Ministries. Support for this radio ministry and our outreach programs comes from listeners like you. Many families that have children that need daily treatments for their illnesses are extremely challenged due to the cost of simply getting to the treatment facilities. Our Fuel for Life outreach supplies gas cards to families at four children's hospitals. You can support our outreach 
outreach programs by sending your tax-deductible donations to Living with Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. If you'd like to become a sponsor of this radio ministry, we'd love to hear from you as well. Thanks for listening. So if life has left you kicking up dust, keep listening, keep looking up and grab your umbrella, get ready to sing in the rain. Get ready, get ready. God in His goodness is gathering showers of grace. The preceding program was brought to you by Teague's Superette and Cafe at 130 Soco Road in Maggie Valley. Call them at 828-926-1147. You can hear this program and others from Living with Victory Ministries on YouTube, GodTube, iTunes, Spotify, and at livingwithvictory.podbean.com.